All right, so before we get going, a little bit about Women Who Code. Uh, women Who Code is a global nonprofit organization dedicated to inspiring women to exceed, exceed and excel in technology careers. We actually started as a small community in San Francisco back in 2011, and now it's grown to, I mean, it's a, an organization all around the world uh, across 80 different cities. And I believe we are at 165,000 members globally. Our vision is a world where women are representative as technical executives, founders, VCs, board members, and software engineers. A little bit about the Boston Network. We uh, are about 6,500 members. We typically organize two to three, two to four free events per month. Um, it kind of fluctuates a bit now that we're all remote as we try to figure out what the best format is. Um, but some of the events that you might see are Tech Talks. We do this one pretty regularly, usually once a month. We also often have study groups. So if you are actually looking for a job and need to practice in algorithms or interviews, we have um, a series of algorithm uh, focused events where you can practice those skills. We also often have panels and workshops. Um, actually coming up, we have a workshop on React Hooks. So if you're interested in learning more about React or just need to learn more about React Hooks, that would be a great one to attend. Uh, we also often have community and networking events. So not necessarily skill-based, but uh, hopefully to expand your network, which will be you know, super helpful if you're looking for a new job, for example. Um, and last but not least, we are here for you. So if you don't see uh, any events that you're interested in and have a great suggestion for something that we should try in the future, definitely let us know. Um, please reach out to myself. You can also reach out to Melissa. Um, well, there are two Melissas. One of the Melissas is uh, on the Women Who Code Boston team as well. And Susie, who is also one of our speakers, is also part of the Women Who Code Boston team. So please reach out to us if you have any ideas or if you're interested in speaking, that would also be great. So in terms of upcoming events, we have, uh, actually we have a lot of things planned for the rest of the spring. Uh, Mondays, every other week, starting next week, we have a winter wellness, actually it's not winter anymore, it actually changes to spring. It's a spring wellness workshop series. This actually did start in the winter and I did a really bad copy paste job, which is why it still says winter. Um, but one of our leads, uh, leads Ashley, yeah, she leads, she, she does yoga on the side and she's actually a yoga instructor and she leads this amazing winter, as I keep saying winter, spring wellness workshop series. It's super quick, uh, 30 minutes every other Monday, would highly recommend. We also, as I mentioned before, we're doing a, a workshop on React Hooks and that's scheduled for next Wednesday. We are also doing a book giveaway uh, it's a book called Girl Decoded by an author, uh, Rana, uh, I forget her last name. Susie, do you remember? I forgot. Are you muted? It's um, Rana al Kaliobi, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. And I will try to just paste this link in the Zoom chat right now. So if you're interested in a free book, definitely check that out. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, again, if you're new to Women Who Code Boston, we don't just do events. Um, I re highly recommend signing up on our website. We also have a lot more to offer, uh, a lot of coding resources, often free scholarships or scholarships and free tickets to uh, various events as well as conferences. So highly recommend checking that out. And last but not least, we also have a code of conduct. Women Who Code is an inclusive community dedicated to provided dedicated to providing an empowering experience for everyone who participates in or supports our community, um, regardless of gender, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, ability, physical appearance, body size, race, ethnicity, age, religion, socioeconomic status, and so on. So our goal is really to inspire everyone and we want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable doing so. <clears throat> and yeah, please be mindful of everyone. We encourage you all to take space and make space so that you can participate, but also leave space for others as well. So enough about us. Moving on to the event. We have two amazing speakers lined up for you all. Uh, the first one is Susie Burke. She is a strategic advisor at Finn. And not only is she a strategic advisor at Finn, but she is also, as I mentioned before, one of our amazing leaders at Women Who Code Boston. And she is joined today by Melissa Jerkois, who is a chief, who is the chief ex customer experience officer at Adaptation. Sorry, that was a mouthful. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I'd love to welcome them both. 
Great, thanks so much, Indira. I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to hopefully have a little bit of fun tonight. We're so excited that you guys could join us. Um, we're going to do a career escape room. So just so you have a little bit of background, Melissa and I have both been through career transitions actually fairly recently. And we're really excited to be able to share the tools that we use to kind of help us find what, what, what you know, our next great career was. Um, and so hopefully this will provide you some insights into what's the perfect career for you, you know, find out what drives you, find out who can be part of your dream team. So just as a little bit of introduction, um, I've been in tech for over 30 years, uh, mostly at small companies and startups. So probably held just about every job imaginable during that time um, from engineer, database architect, uh, chief product officer. And you did a little bit of HR at times, you know, a little bit, a little bit of everything when you're in small companies. Um, what I've transitioned to recently is um, advising uh, social good startups and nonprofits who have really innovative um, solutions. You know, everything from a, a charitable gifting platform to wearable tech that helps disabled people to ed tech. So um, a lot of different, a lot of different things, which is a lot of fun. And um, I'm gonna let Melissa give a little bit of intro for herself. Yeah, thanks, Susie. Uh, really happy to be here. Some of you may recognize me. I think I was here last month um, with another co colleague, Candace, talking to you about mentoring. Um, so many different passions. Um, and I love, again, like one of my favorite topics to talk to my team about is what they love to do about their job. Um, and what are the things that sort of light them up? So this is a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And as Susie said, um, went through a career transition within the last year, um, actually moving into the startup world from the corporate world. And I spent about two decades there. Similar to Susie, uh, started as an engineer right out of college um, and worked through many different roles, including technical leadership and product management and solution architecture. Um, so and I'm really excited about, about where I landed and our, my ability to make an impact and share kind of some of the drivers that led me here um, as part of this journey as well. So really excited to get started. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the rules of the room. So this game has two rounds. We're gonna have the driver discovery round and the dream team. Um, basically what we're gonna do is everybody's gonna win and lose as a team. So we really need some participation. Um, we have a couple of game masters. The quiz masters are gonna be Indira and Melissa. And so their decisions are, are final, um, but they're gonna decide when we can move on to, to the next room. So hopefully we won't get stuck in the, the driver room. Hopefully you guys will uh, have some fun and, and participate in this. Um, you're always not only allowed, but actually encouraged to use outside help. Um, and we want you to have a lot of fun. So. Some, some pretty basic rules, hopefully uh, won't be too complicated, but we will move on to the first room. So the first room is driver discovery. So let's talk a little bit about drivers. Um, a lot of people when they're looking for jobs, you know, they're, they're given a bunch of different things to, to think about, about themselves before they go in and look for the right job. Uh, what I found and Melissa found both is that what we don't hear a lot of talk about necessarily is drivers. We hear a lot about values, which is definitely important. Um, but there's a difference between what drives you and what's important to you. So, so drivers are things that motivate you. What makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning? Like what, what gets you excited? Um, those things are your drivers. Your values are what's important to you. So when you're looking for a job, um, you're looking for something that that is a good fit of, on both sides. And sometimes the company that you have has the values they want, the values that are important to you, you know, that they're ethical and um, things like that. But maybe the work you're doing isn't the thing that motivates you. So when you have that disconnect is a lot of times when you feel like you should stay in the job because it seems to have all the right things, but, but what's missing is that driver. The other thing that's really important, and, and as I mentioned, both Melissa and I have been through um, a pretty significant career change in the last few years, 
is that it's not a one and done thing. You don't figure out your driver and it's your driver for the rest of your life. Whereas your values do tend to remain pretty solid throughout your lifetime, your drivers change. Um, I can tell you when I had three young girls racing all around me all the time, um, my drivers were very different. What motivated me for work was very different than it is now where I have an empty nest. So you should be constantly reevaluating and revisiting your drivers as you go through. Um, when, you, when your circumstances in life change, when you go from you know, um, any kind of life, life altering things like having a baby or, or like I said, being an empty nester, um, when you decide that you want a different career, when you feel a nudge that something's not quite right, um, that's the thing that's going to tell you, you, you really should start to reevaluate and see if, if there's something that has changed and what drives you and if you need to then reevaluate your, your job and your career situation. By the way, as we're going through, please feel free to put things in the in the chat. Um, if you have any questions or comments to make, you know, put whatever you want to say in the chat, and you know, somebody will will bring up the questions so that we can answer them as we go along. Because I'd like this to be as interactive as possible. Um, since we have a number of people, we won't be able to to necessarily let people um, speak, but we would love to have them be able to chat. So. Talking about drivers a little bit. Um, so Melissa and I actually have a little bit of a different opinion on, on how many you should look at. <laughs> so we're showing you, um, a, you know, a group of about eight here. I've seen everywhere from, from five to, um, to 85. Um, I've gone through the process of going through 85 of them. <laughs> and Melissa thinks that's crazy. Um, but for me, that was important because I narrowed it down to 10 and then I narrowed it down to five, and then I prioritized my five. Um, that was just kind of a better fit for me. But Melissa, I don't know if I've ever shown you these, but I actually have these cards. It's called Discover What, <laughs> what Drives Your Career. And I've used these with a couple of, um, a couple of my, my mentees, and these are all of the cards. <laughs> oh, my oh my goodness. Yeah, so, I definitely have not done the test of 80. I, yeah, I, so, so it's kind of fun because you go through and you do like a few of them at a time and you put them out and then you pick between those few and then you put them to the side. So it's kind of a fun little, little project. But um, there are a lot of different types of things. What we're going to go through tonight is these eight, um, which are kind of broader categories than obviously what I have in these little cards. But I'm going to share um, a link tree at the end that will give you uh, a lot of different links to different styles of going through your drivers. So um, you can get a lot more detailed if you want to. There are some online things and, and we'll share those with you. So that is um, one thing I'm trying to think what else. I think that's about it. Well, now we're going to start to go through. So what I'm going to ask you to do as we start to go through um, is to think about these and which of these drivers, which one driver is the most important one to you? So to escape this room, um, we're going to need the majority of people, and I'm going to leave that up to Indira and Melissa when they feel like we've got, you know, we've got a good amount of people participating in the chat to figure out what your top driver is. Um, and you don't have to put your top driver. If you don't want to like share what your driver is, you can just say that you succeeded, like just put that in the chat. But if you want to put it, that would be great. We'd love to see what, what people, what interests people and what, what drives them right now. Um, and then we're going to kind of move on from, from there. And um, if you really get stuck, you can pick three that aren't important to you <laughs> and say you succeeded. <laughs> so, so we'll give you that out. But I'd really like you to pick your top. Um, if you can only pick your top three, that's fine. But, but all eight can't really count as your top because they're all different. And one of them's got to be more important. So uh, let's talk about impact and purpose. So this is when what drives you to get out of bed every day is making a difference in somebody's life. Um, that the work you're doing is impactful. You're directly affecting people in a really positive way. So if that's your number one driver, it's because that's the thing that motivates you. Like that is the thing that you care about the most. Um, expertise. So expertise is when you want to be the person that people go to when they have a question. So a trainer, a professor, a coach, 
One thing that's really um, important to know in terms of this particular one is it's not necessarily a manager um, because you can definitely be an individual contributor and be the person who's that, that it's important to be an expert. It's somebody who um, goes deep and understands what really makes things tick. So people want to go and, and ask that person, you know, when they're stuck, what to do in this particular situation. So that could be the tech person who knows how to get a specific thing done. It could be the QA person who knows more about the system than almost anybody else in the company. So what drives you in that case is that you really want to be that person. You, you enjoy answering questions for people. You enjoy being the person that, that they go to. So material rewards. Um, material rewards is more than just money. It's part-time work, flex-time work, work from home. It's, it's those benefits that could make a big difference to you. So as I mentioned, when I had three young girls, it was really important for me to have part-time, flex time, work from home. That was, that was an important thing at that time. And it became less important to me, you know, as, as my kids grew and that wasn't as important. So that, that reevaluating your drivers is especially important when you're talking about material rewards, because those are the type of drivers that will change over time. And maybe that the material rewards will become less important you know, whereas there's times where it's a driver because you have student loans or you have family to look after or something like that. But later on in life, maybe that's not true. So that's one of the things you definitely want to reevaluate as you go through. Um, adventure and challenge. So if this is your top driver, you are motivated by risk and change and uncertainty. So you would have loved this year. <laughs> You thrive in an environment um, where the work is constantly changing. You really like to be stretched outside your comfort zone. Um, so that would be if you're motivated by adventure or challenge. Power and influence. So this doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that you are looking to be queen or, or CEO, um, but it does mean you possibly want to influence the culture and direction of your company. You want to be recognized for being influential. You love to be in charge, um, making decisions. A lot of times people who um, are driven by this power and influence, um, they would rather have a, a high ranking title than have more money. So, so that's one of those things to think about if that if, if you like, you know, shaping things then maybe power and influence is, is your number one driver. Uh, connectivity, that's all about being with other people. It's being part of a team, wanting harmonious relationships, um, wanting work that has significant personal interaction with other people. So, so if you are about connectivity, you do not want to be a remote worker who is an individual contributor. <laughs> you know, um, you, you doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in person, as we've all learned over the last year, but it does mean that you want to be part of a team and constantly talking to that team about what it is you're doing. So creativity, um, this is one for a long time that, that I think I got wrong in terms of um, what that meant. Creativity is not artistic ability. I personally cannot even draw a stick figure correctly, <laughs> but I do consider myself a very creative person. And for a long time, I didn't. And then I realized that really creativity is, is building things. It's, it's making something out of nothing. It's connecting the disconnected. Um, it's being innovative. So there are a lot of ways you can be creative and not necessarily artistic, but obviously being artistic is, is being creative. So creativity could certainly be a driver if it's something that you, you constantly want to be looking at things in a different way and you know making something new or different. And I think a lot of engineers have that creative side. They just don't necessarily think of it as, as creativity. Um, lifelong learning. So this is someone who is curious and just always wants to know why and actually goes out of their way personally to pursue knowledge and learn new things all the time. Not just necessarily learning for the job, but learning because they love to learn. So those are our drivers. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to, to bring them up. I haven't seen any questions in the chat. A lot of great feedback and people 
chiming in on like their top three. But one of the things I would add Susie to is um, like you mentioned, like reevaluating and I call that seasons, like seasons in your life. And I, I often refer to them that way. Cause I kind of feel like I'm, you do feel it. Like you just like you feel seasons changing in the weather, right? Like there's something happening where you're like on the precipice and like there's, it could be a major life event. It could be something really subtle. Like it could be something that's hap just an event that happened, like a conversation you had that triggered something internally for you where you're like, wow, I hadn't thought of what I did in that way. And it gave you perspective, but definitely be open to that because I think what I think the other thing that that I had mentioned in the past when we've done this before is I'm really good at saying what I don't want to do. Like I'm exceptional at being like, no, not that. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, so that's why I, I don't know that I could survive 80 li a list of 80 drivers because <laughs> I would just be like just crossing everything off the list. So I think, um, you know, and that but that's a powerful tool too. like don't dismiss that because you know, that it is sort of the process of elimination, but it also gets you that much closer to what actually is driving you. Like what are the motivational factors in your life? So it is important to recognize those things because if you don't recognize what you don't wanna be working on or what doesn't really light you up, you'll find yourself doing it and you'll wake up one day and go, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing with my life, right? How many times have we thought that? I'm sure at least once in your life, you've been like, what is going on? Um, this isn't what I didn't mean to do that. Right. So you have to have that self-awareness and it really is all about that. It's, it's tough though. Um, so like when you're doing this, like the season aspect is super important because it gives you this like time bound artificial nonetheless. Right. I can't tell if your season is a week, a month, five years. I don't know. That's literally something that only, you know, it's very unique to you. Um, if your season is a day, God bless your soul. I don't know how you're going to change your career or what you're doing that often, but, but nonetheless, like those things can, you know, sort of vacillate that fast, but you know, there, there is sort of a time period where you're, you're focused and you feel confident about what you're doing. You're driven to keep doing it. And like, that's when I say like, that's like that time bound period of, of your season, you know, what I refer to as your season, but pay attention to that because I think the, the analogy I'll say is like when I bought the house that I'm sitting in right now, I'll be honest, it wasn't my first choice, but it was the choice that worked for us as a family. And my husband said to me, you need to change your mindset. You need to look at this home as our home for the next five years, not our forever home. That was 10 years ago. So that's a whole different story. But my point just being that that helped me ease like into it and it helped me literally adjust my mindset like him just saying don't look at it as forever so use that too as a guiding factor when you're going through these because otherwise it is super overwhelming even with this list never mind the 80 that the deck of cards that Susie has I mean that's just crazy talk but now but even with this list of eight here um you're like all of them right like that's easy even like top three is is tough but I can tell you at one point in my career, similar to Susie, I, you know, I was a single mom with two young kids and material reward was very important to me for really good reasons, right? Like it was a driver for me above and beyond in some cases, my own connection to my work. Like I was very driven by being able to support my family. And that was like a very important defining thing for where I was in my life. Um, and then as I grew up as I matured, as my kids got older, as I got, you know, excelled more in my career and learned new things, those things shifted because I was entering a different season. I had different needs. My family had different needs and like things changed. You know, I went into a phase where expertise was really important to me. I wanted to be seen as someone that everyone could come to, right? Like, oh, you need to know about that. You should go talk to Melissa. Like that was really important to me. And now like, a dramatic shift is like, I want to, I want to have purpose to the work I'm doing. Right. So it literally like very different seasons. And there was a lot more seasons. I'm very oversimplifying um, for, for demonstration, but, but just pay attention to that and like, don't get overwhelmed by, but if I picked impact and purpose right now, it means I'm saying that's the most important thing. And I don't care about money. That's not what it's saying. It's saying like right now in this moment, that's what you're drawn. You feel like like Susie said, like you're literally like something's pulling you to get out of bed and go do that thing. Yeah, somebody asked if there's a recommended approach to, to balance drivers. So so what I would say is what, what you're looking for um, and 
you know, going through this exercise is going to possibly take some time. But what you're looking for is what's your gut telling you? You know, all of these things are valid drivers. All of these things are great drivers. We need all of these different types of people on our team. Um, so there is no good driver or bad driver. Uh, so there's no balancing. It's just in your moment, in this moment in your life right now, what is the one that you're gut is telling you. If I said tomorrow morning you get out of bed, you can do one thing for work, which one of these things would be the most important to you? You know, um, as Melissa said, for me right now, it's impact and purpose, but definitely at different points in my career was um, uh, power and influence because I wanted to, I wanted to create the culture in my startup 20 years ago. Um, that was really important to me. Like I wanted to be part of that team that made that culture and created that culture. Uh, there was times where expertise was important. So it, it, it is going to change, but what's important to you right now? Which one stands out? And if, like Melissa said, if you can't figure out which one stands out, which one can you cross out? You know, um, you know, which ones just really aren't that important to you? And, you know, it could be adventure challenge. Like maybe you don't want, maybe you want stability. So you can just cross out adventure and challenge if that's not, if that's not one that's important. So, um, so where, where are we at, uh, quiz masters? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes, the game masters have conferred, conferred and we believe that it is an appropriate time to move forward. So let's do it. All right, let's do that. Um, okay. One. So room two, room two is the dream team, and Melissa's going to take take lead on this one. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Susie. So you, hopefully, if you guys are familiar with the escape room or you've done it before, you know that you didn't go into the room alone, right? Like this is when Susie kicked us off. She said, you know, lean on others, use your team, you know, phone a friend, all of those things. Like it's super important, right? Like you're not going to do this alone. You're not going to make a big, huge career transition or major life decision independently. And I guess kudos to you if you do, but I don't recommend it. Um, I really do think like there's a lot of value in using your network and your circle to be able to support you in those things. And you're gonna make a much better thoughtful decision that has intention. So um, definitely don't try to escape the room alone, right? That's the moral to the story. And so what I want you to do is, you know, get a piece of paper and a pen out or, you know, type it on your computer. I'm gonna walk through these five roles in your dream team. This is like people within your inner circle. I'm gonna explain what, what role these people play for you in helping you craft that next way, how you're gonna to escape to your perfect career. Um, and I want you to just jot down some names. Like when I describe to you who each of these are, who are the people that come to your mind? Don't overthink it, right? Just think like, oh, that person is always a cheerleader for me. That is, it's always this person like, and write it down. And then to get out of this room, um, we would love for you to share at least one like at least one of these people, I mean, share them all if you want. That's awesome. If you're able to identify that all, you are so far ahead. I think the challenge here too is, um, again, similar. I hate to always be like the, the negative person, but like similar to, to saying, who is this person? You can also identify who's not, right? Sometimes that's really important too. Don't go to ask somebody for something that they are not designed to give you, right? It's really important to understand who that is. Um, there's a lot of times that people will say, you know, they're, they're frustrated with their manager or the person they directly report to, right? Because, well, they're not just not giving me um, constructive criticism about like how I can improve or they're not really helping me carve out a career path. And I'm always saying to them is, are they the right person? Are they like who they are? Are they really aligned with where you need to go? And why are you looking solely to them for that? Like, you have lots of people around you in life, including coworkers and people that you go to the gym with. And if you have children, other parents of other children, their teachers, um, your dentist, your hygienist, your hairdresser, your hairdressers are really good at this, by the way, they know where all the bodies are buried. Like literally they just, all they do is listen all day. And I swear they're the best, they're the best listeners and they can recount things that you've told them like months ago. It's amazing. So like people that do your nails, like all of these people, these are really critical people in your circle. So think of all these people and how you could leverage them 
And who are some of these people that have always been there for you in some way, or maybe even like people that you have acquaintances that you've talked to, and they can help shed light on some of the things they know about you and you can go to them for these things. So that's, that's really what I want you to do when I walk through these things and recognize that the most important thing you can do is build this dream team because together as a team, you're going to be able to solve the puzzle faster. Like that is definitely what I want you to take away from this. It's like, holy smokes, I have a lot of resources and they're right at my fingertips. I just didn't write them down. Right. It's just something we just don't do. Right. Um, and I can tell you, you know, anecdotally, when I, you know, about a year ago to said, kind of like woke up to that season and said, I need something else. And what is it that I need? And I did like all that, like soul searching around drivers, not the 80 of them, but like a fair amount. Um, and I realized what was kept bubbling up for me and what I was being called by was that having an impact and a purpose. And that was what I was missing. I felt really, really disconnected to the work that was taking me away from my family and my friends and any other things. Like I was like, well, if I'm going to spend that time doing anything, I need to feel like I'm doing something that matters. I need to feel like I'm creating something that didn't exist before me, almost like leaving a legacy behind, right? Like that was really important to me and still is. Um, and I put, I put out to a network I had spent years building. So that's another theme, by the way, if you don't have a network, build one now, cause you're going to need it. You always do 80% of jobs you will get from here on out. And in the past, if you've received jobs are through people, you know, they are not from just hitting apply now on a website. I promise it's just not real. That's not how you get jobs. I see someone shaking and nodding as I'm talking. So they, she's been through it too. So um, there's proof in the audience. So just trust me, like your network is, it, you're gonna need it and build it before you need it. Like build it before you need it, cultivate it, go to events like this, connect, go through the list of people that are on the participant list here. And if you're not already connected to them, connect to them. You know, everyone throw your LinkedIn in the chat. like. These are your people. Like you guys should definitely create an inner network here. Um, they may end up being some of these roles, right? So super important. Um, and like, I highly recommend that. And that's what I did. That's what I did at this last season. And I hadn't ever thought of it. And that's what really inspired me to connect with Susie on this and kind of craft this, this cool workshop that we've done now a few times because there's so much power there. And I hadn't thought of all these people that were around me that know me so well through the network I've built and like just asking them, what do you think I should do? Or have you heard of something that I should do? Here's what I'm thinking. And that's how I landed at adaptation, right? I knew one of the co-founders, I had known her for years. And literally that's how I landed here. Um, and I had so, mu so much amazing outreach by doing that. So just definitely recommend that. Um, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna talk about these different roles and, and give maybe some examples some fun examples about each of them along the way. I think cheerleader is pretty explanatory um, just by the nature of it, but this is the person that's on the sidelines with the pom-poms, just cheering you on every step of the way, right? Like they are not your biggest critic. They're quite the opposite. Like literally you could do no wrong in their eyes. Even when you're like, oh my God, I completely messed that up. They're like, no, you didn't. You're awesome. And you're like, no, I really suck. And they're like, no, you're really awesome. So that's your, that is your cheerleader. So, you know, like, again, as I say this, like, think about, oh, I know who that is. And you just write it down. Right. Like, and you're, you're like, you go to them for something very specific, right? Like there's a reason why you go to them because you need them to build you up. And that's what they're there for. Um, they are not there to help you when you've done something wrong. Right. Other than to make you feel good about it which is interesting, but it's important. It, this is an important role because they always see you at your best, even when you're not, even when you know, cause you're very self-aware people that you're not, they see you at your best. So that's who your cheerleader is. Um, and you can always count on them. So they're very important. I don't mean to mock them. Like I have a cheerleader. I have, actually have a couple and I am grateful for them because sometimes you just need that, right? You need that little pick me up. Um, the challenger though, this one's my favorite. Um, and they're tough cookies, man. There, I, I would say I, I had, I did this workshop when we did this for adaptation, actually, Susie, I had an ex coworker um, on the workshop and she texted me after and she goes, you know why you love the challenger so much? And I think Carla might have even said it during the workshop because you are the challenger. You are. I think, Carla, I think she did. <laughs> like, oh, crap. Totally guilty. But I mean, it's so important, right? Like, I mean, it's just, I, I, I do see the value probably because I, resemble it, but I like, I do see the value in it because this person, they literally challenge you, right? Like they don't take, they don't, they see right through your BS. 
They call you on it <laughs> and they're very critical. They're not the person you go to when you want to get like puffed up. Okay. Like if you want to know how can I improve and you're serious about it, this is who you go to. They do not have pom-poms for you. Like they, like if you, they'll be like, all right, you want to know how you could not screwed that up? Let's talk about this. Let's like do the autopsy right now. Like this is what we're going to do. That's the person like they're dry, they're direct. They're sometimes they may be super blunt. Yeah, I'm totally guilty. Um, but the value you get there is growth on the other side. Like, I promise you, um, I respect this role. Um, maybe even more so now that I realize I play it actually for quite a few people, but, but I do respect this role because, um, without it, I think it's really tough to grow when you don't have someone that's, that is kind of pushing and like telling you how you can improve. So like, think about who that is for you. Um, one of the key ways to see that too, is they help you see your blind spots, right? Like they're not there. They're not the feel good person. They're there to really identify what you don't see about you. No matter, even the most self-aware people don't see certain things, right? They miss it because we just don't, we don't see that. Like we don't have the same perspective that people on the outside of us do. So super important role. One of my favorites, apparently, because I am that person, um, <laughs> very uncomfortable sometimes to be around these people, <laughs> but really important. Um, the comfort zone crusher. So this one's like, I would say this is like your, your fun friend. This is like, or your fun person in your network, right? This is when the, the example we usually say is this is the person when it's like, I'm going to go, I, I want to go skydiving. And they immediately are like, all right, let's go Saturday, five o'clock. Want to go? Like, I'm with you. Let's go. And by the way, I would never do that. So, Which is why I said, I'm going to, I'm going to make Melissa skydive with me someday. <laughs> terrified of heights. <laughs> Definitely out of my comfort zone. No. Um, but that is the person that's like, they're, they're going to, they're in for the, the adventure and the challenge with you all the time. Right. And they're, they're ready to go with you um, right by your side trying something new, that's your person. So we all have people like that, right? That will, you have some crazy idea and they are like, sure, let's go. And they don't even like ask any details. And you're like, aren't you gonna ask me if we should do this? Nah, let's just go do it, you know? And that's your comfort zone crusher, right? And and they're cool because you kind of need that sometimes to, to be able to get out of your comfort zone, you need a companion. Right. So then your challenger might say, you should try this. And you're like, oh, crap, how am I going to do that? And then you say to your comfort zone crusher, this whole other individual playing this role for you. I got to go. I got to go speak in front of like 30 people. I've never done that. I'm so scared. And they're like, I'll be in the audience. Let's go. You know, that's your comfort zone crusher. Right. They're there with you. Or they're like, cool, let's sign up for, you know, Toastmasters. Let's figure this out together. Like they're right there with you. Um, so, you know, think about who that is um, and they can help you break the ice when you're trying to get to that next level. So your motivator, this one's a really interesting one. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of what you think. It's someone you look up to, right? So someone that's a bit ahead of you, maybe on a path that right now, remember in your season, let's keep it in context, like in your current season, based on what you've chosen that drives you, there's someone that's doing that thing or embodying that that driven passion that you want to have. And you look at them and you're like, I'm motivated by what they've already accomplished. That's who I'm talking about. It does not have to necessarily be someone in your circle or someone that you even know. It could be a public figure. It could be someone famous. It could be someone that you read about and you really don't have a lot of information, but you see them and you're like really inspired by this person and, and motivated to be not necessarily like be exactly like them, but to do the things they're doing because it, it matches what you've chosen that has, you know, drive, drives you to get out of bed in the morning. That's your motivator. Um, again, like doesn't have to be someone, you know, this probably isn't, maybe not your hairdresser, maybe it is no judgment. Like these are the people that are doing these amazing things that you aspire to do. And then finally your safe space. Again, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the safe space is certainly not going to be your comfort zone crusher. Hopefully I explained that well enough that you can tell the difference, right? They're not going to go skydiving with you. Susie is not my safe space, right? Like not. <laughs> barely not. Um, but you are so comfortable with this person, right? It could be like your BFF. It could be your, your significant other. It could be your parent, lots of different people. Um, someone that you can just be yourself with. That might mean just completely vulnerable, breaking down, right? Which some people are like, 
well, isn't that your cheerleader? No, not necessarily, right? Like this could be someone that you can really bear your soul to. Um, and they're no, there's no judgment. It's just, they're just going to listen to you. You don't go to that person to puff you up. You don't go to that person to be like, you're amazing, you know, or, or to say, well, here, let me tell you all the things you did wrong, you know, or let's go jump out of a plane. That's not who you're going that you're going to them for that comfort. Really. It's, it's to be genuine and authentically you feel like you can expose yourself to that person. And there is no judgment. Um, that person, by the way, it could be a therapist. Your therapist could be your safe space. That's actually, a, you know, a perfect and, you know, a very important role in your life. I won't tell you to get a therapist, but I do highly recommend. Um, I'm just saying like that could be a, a match for a safe space. Like it's someone that you can literally tell everything to. Um, and I think, uh, you know, and then I would say too, they kind of remind you similar to the cheerleader, but a little bit different. They also remind you like not to, not to take yourself so seriously, like to see, have perspective on things. So they listen really well, but they also reflect with you. So that's something we're going to say. So we do have one, one question, Melissa, and I think we get this question almost every time. Can ah. one person play multiple roles on your dream team? I know we always get this question. Um, for one thing, you're cheating. That's all I'm saying. Like, don't cheat. <laughs> so no, I get it. Like, um, so sure. But I would challenge you to try again. See, I'm challenging you. This is I definitely am, am the challenger. I can't help it. Um, I would challenge you to to really think hard about if it makes sense, right? Like your cheerleader is not your challenger. And again, this goes to like, make sure you're going to the right people for the right thing that they're, they're designed to provide for you and think about your past experiences with them. And that's what should really drive out who they are to you in your circle. Um, so that's, I just, I kind of throw caution to that. Like it would be really, again, like your comfort zone crusher is not going to be your safe space. I just, it doesn't compute. And then your challenger shouldn't be your cheerleader because you're not going to get the honest, direct feedback that you need to grow from your cheerleader. So it's hard. I think the ones that probably um, seem, seem like they could be the same person, but there's reasons you want different is cheerleader and safe space, mm -hmm. right? They do actually perform different roles. So a yeah. safe space is just going to listen to you and be there for you. Whereas a cheerleader is going to be like, you are awesome. You know, right. like so there, there is a, there is a difference um, between those two and the challenger and the comfort zone crusher are also, they seem like they're similar, but they are actually very different. Um, a challenger is going to say, you should, you know, do this or give you constructive feedback or something like that. A comfort zone crusher is going to help you achieve the thing that you're trying to achieve. So they, they do um, have slightly, you know, they're, they're nuanced, but they are, they are different. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And honestly, if you expect too much of these roles to be played by any individual, um, you're losing out at the end of the day, like you, you are losing out. So I would say that, like, that was perfect, Susie. I think, you know, there are, there are benefits to seeing, even if someone could play multiple roles, could you find an individual that you could count on for each of these things? Because I think you'll get more out of it, quite honestly. So be selfish when you're, when you're making this list, be really selfish about who's playing these roles for you in your life. So um, in order for us to escape this room, we want you to identify out of these five, a person that can fill one, at least one of these roles for you. Um, and if you have, yeah, great. Either put that you have, how many you have or what the role is that you've filled or you don't have to put the person, but, um, but we wanna see a, a good number of people who have actually been able to find at least, at least one person. Oh, someone picked you, Susie. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> yes, I am. Guilty. <laughs> I can help you out, Lauren. Apparently I'm very good at it. <laughs> you know, it was funny. I think in one of the things I said, you know, 
something about cheerleader, like be your mom. And like half of the audience was like, nope, <laughs> nope, challenger. <laughs> yeah, me too, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I think about it, I'm like, well, I don't know why I said that because my mom is more of a challenger than a, than a cheerleader. So that was kind of funny. That's great. Oh, another thing to like combination to build season into this too. The same person can play a different role at a different time in your life, just to kind of like super make it complex for you all to figure out. But like, I, again, keep it contextual in this, in the current season, like don't, don't pigeonhole someone. Right. So maybe on certain, maybe in certain seasons, your mom is your cheerleader, but in other seasons, she's definitely your challenger because of something you're going through. And it might, you might draw that out of that person because it's really what you need from them. Right. So it's, it's very possible for an individual to play multiple roles. Um, but kind of always know in your season, who am I going to for these types of things? Like, what are my expectations when I'm having this conversation? Um, and that, that way, again, be selfish. You'll get the most out of it in that case. But that season thing is, is pretty huge to like be aware of that. And something to think about too with this, you know, we talk, we're talking about this as your dream team, but um, you may have heard this in, in other circles about, uh, you know, having your, your board, your personal board, um, this is kind of your personal board, right? It's, it, you can have mentors that fulfill all different roles, friends, family, hairdressers, you know. Um, so think about this. This is kind of like your own personal board that when you have an issue, you go to and you expect them to all have different opinions, right? They're going to tell you different things and you're going to weigh them and decide what, what really fits for you. So you don't go to the cheerleader all the time because you want them to say, yes, I agree with you. You're awesome. You should do that. You want to go to each of them and, and get all of those varied opinions and then decide for yourself what is right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. And think about too, I, I would challenge you as you guys think about who was on your personal board of directors. I love that, that analogy as well. Um, what roles do you play for other people? You guys all know my role, apparently. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm pigeonholed there for life because I don't see any changing happening at this stage of my life. But I have been a cheerleader for people at times too. I do hope. Um, but I would say, you know, definitely think about the roles that you've played. I think that also helps you identify others. You're like, oh yeah, I'm always, you know, a cheerleader for so-and-so. And, and being that for other people, um, it also invites it back to you. So recognize that too. So somebody did mention that, you know, a, a major issue for them was that their personal network doesn't really include people that are knowledgeable or understanding about their professional life. And um, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to some of the people, you know, that have put their LinkedIn. I'm going to share um, my LinkedIn and Melissa's. I'm going to give you a, a link tree um, before, before we leave that has our um, information and you know, reach, reach out to some people, you know, ask them for a 15 minute coffee chat, um, get to know some people in, in this group and women who code in some other organizations that you might be part of, because those are the people that you can go to for some of this stuff that is more, more professional. Yeah, definitely. So quiz masters, how are we doing here? I think we're good on responses. Awesome. This is great. I did have a little thing. I can't get it to work. Let me see if I can, let me try it here. No, oh, it's supposed to do confetti. I don't know. Oh, there oh. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it on the last one. It didn't work. It's a new thing for Canva. Um, all right. So I have to move my screens around. So this is the bonus round. We really don't have too much time for it, but um, I'm going to put it up. We are going to, one of the things I'm sharing on the link tree, which I'll put in the, the chat now, is this whole deck so that you can have it yourself. Um, but these are some things when you're trying to think about your drivers and trying to think about, you know, your careers is, is how to find those clues, what excites and energizes you. You can um, think about your values. You can think about what you're curious about. What are the things that you read about all the time? What makes you smile? Um, what was your favorite subject in school and, and why? That doesn't mean like if, if um, history was my favorite subject, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go be a historian, um, but maybe if history was my favorite subject, that gives me some clues about what I wanna do or 
hobbies that you have um, or would like to try. Uh, I know I'm a, I love photography. I love taking pictures. I would never want to make a business out of it. But what I love about photography when I really think about it is it makes me look at things from, from different angles. It makes me think about things in a different way. So that gives me a clue that what one of the things that is really important to me is, is being innovative or creative and just kind of looking at sides of things that maybe other people don't see. Um, so, so it's not necessarily that you're gonna take that hobby and make it a career, but what is it about that hobby that interests you and intrigues you? And Melissa, I don't know if you have any, you know, um, things on these slides that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's like, the things that what makes you smile and what values are important to you it's like what do you feel drawn to I'm, I always come back to that and like I always use the term like what lights you up like pay really like again to me it's like always been about paying attention to the things that don't necessarily light me up and being like okay well if those are the things I don't want to be doing where am I feeling super like energized like that feeling of I could do this forever and not not realize that it's you know nine o'clock at night right like it's that that's the stuff that you're looking for not I'm not advocating for working till nine o'clock at night I'm actually trying to break myself of that myself yeah. but, um like but like I'm saying like it's the things that you do without watching a clock right it's those things that you just you have this passion and fuel to continue to do um that's like you know when I say like what makes you smile or what values are important to you it's those types of things so that's you know, those will really help you find your clues. And that's also your dream team. Those people, they'll see that about you. They're like, you know what, when you do this thing, you're like, I watch you talk about it. And you're like a whole different human. They tell yeah. you, you light up, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. When they talk about specific things. They're like, oh, you light up when you do that. You know, yeah. so, so that those, those are the things that, you know, you should keep in mind when you're, when you're thinking about your career and thinking about your, your drivers. Yeah. Um, so we have a few a few minutes. I did put the the link tree in. That's got um, a link to this. It's got a link to a lot of different resources, including things that have almost eighty five different um, drivers to look at. Um, not as much fun as my card game, but um, but those are out there. And I think it has a link to the Dream Team um, article by Mel Robbins, which is, which is part of this. So, um, so hopefully those resources will give you, give you some, some tips and feel free to, to reach out to us. You know, Melissa and I have both included our, our contact info on there. And if you have any other questions, let us know. Yeah, before we end, I did wanna say that Susie and I are working on organizing a mentoring circle event next month. So if there's, you know, any topics that you wanna see uh, discuss there you know we're trying to bring in mentors from different um, different with different backgrounds and different interests so if there's people you can think of or people uh, or like different skill sets that you want to learn more about um, let us know in the chat or feel free to DM me directly as well um, we'd love to hear about that yeah so you know if you're looking for you know somebody like maybe you're interested in learning more about negotiating or maybe you want to learn more about imposter syndrome or you know, how to make connections at work. Um, let us know and we'll try to see if we can find mentors that, that can kind of work with that, that particular skill. We did see one comment from um, Emily, knowing what I want is not that hard for me, but finding it is harder, which is very true, right? And I think um, it's, it's a fair, fair, Point. And what I would suggest there, and I'm sure other people are feeling and thinking that as well. So thank you for sharing that, Emily. I think, um, again, use the your dream team to help you find it. Like when I say, if I didn't reach out to the network that I had built, I wouldn't have found what the next thing was for me. I'm being completely authentic. Like that's exactly how I found it. I didn't go on indeed.com, right? The, so finding it um, is using the people that are around you to help you find it, right? To help you discover the clues of what it is and then also help you find it. And just, you know, be patient and it will definitely come to you. Great. Congrats everyone. I'm, this has been really, really nice. I love the 
the chat. That's been great. You guys have been really participating and that, that always makes us so much better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night.